When adding and subtracting fractions, we have to make sure that our fractions have the same denominators on the bottom. Why? It's because with the denominators being the same, it means each piece that is present is the same size. You can't add or take away pieces when they're not equivalent sized. So we have to do some fraction converting sometimes. The, the challenge with that is sometimes finding what the lowest common denominator is. What number can both of those denominators turn into? And which one's the smallest one, the first one that they can? So when we have something simple like one half added to, um, let's say two thirds, well, we look at what our multiples of two are and our multiples of three to find out what's the first number that they both turn into. And because this is small, we can see six is gonna be the lowest common factor or I'm sorry, the, lowest com the least common multiple or our lowest common denominator in this case. But when our fractions are larger, how do, we, how do we find out what they are? We could take the time to go through and find all of the multiples of each one of those denominator values, but there is a shortcut using the prime factorization tree or looking at the prime factors um, and being able to find a commonality between them. So if we start with, um, say we have 7 18 and uh, 11 24 and we're supposed to add this together. We're not worried about what our numerators are at the moment, we're just care worried about our denominator values. So to start with, we need to break our denominators down by their prime factors. So if I start with 18, I pick any two factors that I know multiply together to create 18. So I'm going to start with 2, which is prime and 9. 9 can then be broken down to 3 and 3. So my prime factors of 18 are 2 times 3 times 3. Then I look at 24. What makes up 24? I'm going to go 2, which is prime, and 12, which can be broken up to 2 and 6, and 6 can be broken up to 2 and 3. So if I list those out, my prime factors of 24 are 2 and 2 and 2 and 3. So I look at which numbers were found in both of them, okay? I had factors of 2 and 3. So then I look at what is the most frequent, the largest time that that factor is repeated. So I have a 2 here, I have 1 2 up here, and 3 2's down here. 3 is more than 1, so I'm going to take all of those. Then my other factor was 3. I had 2 up here and 1 down here, so it appears twice up here. That's the most value. That's what I'm going to grab. So I'm going to take these two sets of numbers and multiply them back together. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and 3 times 3 is 9. And when I multiply those together, I'm going to get 72. Then if you used a calculator and took 72 and divided by 18, you would find that that goes in evenly. If you took 72 divided by 24, you would find that that goes in evenly. So 72 is the lowest common denominator. Then if you were to add your fractions together, you need to make equivalent fractions with 18 now being worth 72. So I go 7 eighteenths and um, I'm trying to remember, I think it's gonna be four. Four, eight. yes, okay. So I'm gonna multiply that by four, so I'll multiply the seven by four, which gives me 28 70 seconds. And then with the 11 24ths, I'm gonna multiply this by three, to get 33 70 seconds. Now, let me clean up some space here. I have 28 70 seconds plus 33 70 seconds. This denominator value just carries over to the answer because that's just telling me how many pieces it takes to make a whole. Now let's find how many pieces we have. 8 plus 3 is 11, so then if I carry the 1, 2, and 3, and another 1, it's going to give me 6. So 61 70 seconds would be what this answer is from that original fraction value. 
Our next fractions include 75 and 120 as the denominators. So to find the prime factors of this, we need to find the prime factors of these two numbers to be able to find out what our lowest common denominator is. So if we take 75, we know that 75 is 3 quarters, uh, or 25s, and 25 is broken down to 5 and 5. So... Then we take 120 and we break it down by 10 and 12. 10 breaks down to 5, 2 and 5. 12 breaks down to 2 and 6. And 6 breaks down to 2 and 3. So if I lay these out, I have a 3 times a 5 times a 5. Oops, didn't leave enough space. Times a 5. And then here I have a 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So there's 3, 5, 2, 2. Okay, so now I look at what are my different numbers that appear. I have 2s, 3s, or I have a 2, 3, and 5. So now I have to find the largest quantity each one of those numbers appears. So with the 2, I have 3 2s appear. Between the threes, I only have one three appear. That's my greatest time. And then the fives appear twice. So then what I need to do is multiply all of those terms together, which would give me eight times three times 25. And guess what? That equals 600. So my lowest common denominator for these fractions is 600. Then, that means I have to convert these to equivalent fractions with 600 as the denominator. To do that, I find out 75 times what equals 600. Well, 75 times 8 equals 600. So I need to multiply the top and bottom by 8, which gives me 96 six hundredths plus, and then how many times does 120 get multiplied? Uh, how many times do I have 120 to get 600? And it's five times. So I got to multiply this top and bottom by five, which is going to give me 310 over 600. Then I get to add those numerators together to give me um, three, four, I think I did my math wrong in my practice. Don't know where I put my notes. Okay. Uh, two, six, one. Okay, so three, ten, ninety-six is six, zero, four hundred six. So I have four hundred six out of six hundred. Well, I know that both of those are even, so I can at least cut them in half. So half of four hundred is two hundred, and half of six is three over. 300. So 203 three hundredths would be your final answer when you're all done. Yeah, it's kind of messy, but mathematically it's correct. So what do we do when there are three different fractions involved? Well, it's the same thing. We break each one down to its prime factors and go from there. So our prime factors of six are just two and three. 21 is made up of three and seven. 98 is made up of two and 49. And 49 breaks down to seven and seven. So we have two and three, three and, and actually I'm gonna write it like this, three and seven, and then we have a two and a seven and a seven. This is just, I'm going to do this so I can kind of see quantities a little easier. Uh, one, two is the most I have. One, three is the mo most number of threes that I have. And then two sevens is the most number of sevens that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply these all together. So if I have 49 six times, I have 294. So 294 is going to be my lowest common denominator. That means I need to start converting the original fractions to be equivalent to uh, the value of a denominator with 294. So, that means we have to figure out how many times 
each one of these denominators went into 294 so that we could find out what we need to multiply their numerators by. So 6 goes into 294 49 times. So that means we multiplied the 5 by 49 as well to get 245 out of 2 over 294. 21 went into 294 14 times. So when I multiply top and bottom by 14, that gives me 112 over 294. And 98 went into 294 three times. So we have 39 294. So we now get to add up all of our numerators, which give us 396 294 ths. Well, we then need to go ahead and convert that to a mixed number. Let me freshen up my pen. So when I do that, I divide 294 into 396. When I do that, I'm left with one whole, it does it one whole time with 102 remaining out of the 294. Well, if we notice, both of those numbers are even, which means I can divide two out of them. And so when I divide two out of the numerator and denominator, my final answer is one and 51, one forty-seven. So that would be our final answer. So start with breaking the denominators down into their prime factors, finding out what is the highest frequency each different number appears, and then multiplying those quantities together, then creating equivalent fractions, and being able to add your numerators together and simplify. Yes, it's time consuming, but it all pencils out, and with the prime factorization as a useful resource, it is actually a lot quicker than it could be if you were trying to list out all the multiples by hand. Good luck.